Hey everybody, welcome to the second video of the 2D uh, video game in JavaScript, in Jitter, in Max MSP series. And in this episode we are going to do a bit of uh, housekeeping. So we're going to tidy up stuff a bit and we're going to organize our code uh, uh, slightly in a different way. First of all, we are going to uh, make our patch a project so that we can keep track of all the files in a neat way. And then we're going to add a couple of portions to our code to add some functionalities to our little game. Uh, but before, actually, I just realized that I didn't even describe what this game is about. Um, so let's do it now. It will be basically be a game in which we have our um, ship that we can control with our keyboard, we, sh we shoot with the mouse, and then there will be a bunch of enemy ships that attack us and whatnot. They will appear in the scene randomly and they will uh, try to hit us and there will be like a background kind of a rolling background thing uh, all sort of different cool stuff so that's what I'm aiming for and let's now put another step in that direction so let's start first of all as I said I want to make our patch a project so I'm going to go here into file save as project I'm going to save it in my favorite location I will call it game project save right so that's now a project and what we're going to do is that we are going to add the files, uh, uh, all the files that we already have for this project inside the project organizer. So I'm going to go here, add existing files, I'm going to find them in the folder I had before. So here uh, we're going to add these two JS files that, are not been, uh, that have not been uh, automatically added, so they will end up in code. Then we're going to add all the sprites that we cut and are inside our sprites folder. Open that. Good, so now they are inside the media uh, folder of the project. What I'm going to do is to now consolidate the project so that all the files will be copied inside our project folder. So if I now go inside my project folder, so my project folder is here, it's called game project, and there is my old folder, which is called game JS. So if I go in my game project folder, you can see that all the code is inside uh, uh, the code folder, all the sprites are inside the media folder, and the patches are inside the patches folder, uh, which is pretty cool because now we can keep stuff very nicely organized. And also every file that is inside uh, uh, one of these folders is automatically inside our patch search path. And that's pretty neat because it will allow us to um, load the assets without actually providing a path for them. So let's actually now open the code. I'm going to do like this. I have a new window of um, Visual Studio Code. I'm going to open folder, I'm going to get my code folder, open that. And with that, we can then open all the files inside this folder. Cool. So now uh, you can see all our files as we left them last time. Uh, let's start uh, fixing some stuff. Now, the, the playership file, actually, this should just be a generic uh, starship class should not be the player ship class because this is just a layout to create starships so it should actually not be called the player ship i'm going to modify that into starship exactly so instead of sprite player ship i'm going to call it sprite starship so every time it was written sprite player ship we're going to modify it into sprite starship so we can do that uh, with the control f so we look and then we replace it with the sprite starship and then we just click here yes replace that replace that replace that and uh, this was it good uh, let's see if we can also manage to rename that file so i'm going here into my folder and i'm going to rename that into game starship i think now our project will complain probably will be would have been better to do that before we create the project uh, let's see what this says. So exactly, I'm going to do that. Uh, remove from project the file that was called the playership. And then I'm going to, again, add existing files. Game project, code. Uh, I'm going to add the file that we just renamed to the project. And it should now work. Cool. So now, instead of our main file, instead of calling this playership, we want to call that starship. Great. Uh, so when we create the player ship, instead of creating a new player ship, we want to create a new starship. 
Um, I don't know, before I wrote the S uh, as a capital letter, but I think it's more correct to actually write it as a small letter. Great, this should be everything we need to change, I think. Let's check if it actually works. Let's try, uh, world on, load the assets. Okay, it seems to be working cool, so everything on that side worked pretty nicely. So let's go back inside our code and uh, let's do something. We basically want to automatically now load the assets when we load the JavaScript file, the JS object. So we don't need anymore to call this function. I'm actually going even to delete this message. So what we're going to do inside of our game asset class, uh, we're actually going to modify the sprite class to receive the path directly uh, at creation of uh, an instance of this class, so in the constructor. Uh, so we're going to do like this. Basically, when, these, uh, when an object for the sprite class is created, we are going to call the load image function. So this load image uh, with the path that we just passed up to the new instance and this should then work. So in the assets class then, uh, we, want, we don't want to assign it here to a new class, we will just assign this to null. And then when we load the assets, what we want to do is to say that this project starship is actually equal to a new sprite uh, with this uh, path. We don't need anymore the folder path because now everything is inside the, uh, the project folder. So everything is inside already the search path of the patch. So we just need to basically just write the name of the file we want to load. So same thing uh, for the projectile. We're going to say new sprite. We don't need the folder path. We don't need the, the slash character and this should now work. So let's give it a try. Instead of a game, a main file, instead of load assets with the folder path, we will load it without any folder path. We don't actually need any folder path here anymore. And then we're actually going to call this function as soon as we instantiate the JS file. So let's see if this works. Yeah, it seems to be working. As soon as I just created the JS object, the stuff appears. So this is already an improvement because we don't need anymore to load the assets before uh, being able to play the game. So actually, instead of calling load assets, let's call this function a bit more generic init. So we call the initialization function every time we instantiate the file. Good, so one thing I want to do now is to make it in a way that we can move our starship uh, by using the keys on our keyboard. So we're going to use the W, A, S, D uh, keys to move the starship, all right? And this we will actually get uh, from outside the JavaScript. So we're going to get uh, which key is uh, currently pressed through the key object. So this will just uh, give us an integer number for every key we press. For example, if I press W, it's going to give us 119. If I press A, 97, and so on for W, A, S, D. And we want to pass that as uh, we want to pre we want to then call a function which we can call uh, uh, like keys I guess or key pressed actually. So we are going to create a function inside our JavaScript called key key pressed. So inside our main file, uh, let's go in our public functions and let's call and uh, let's create a function which we're going to call key pressed and this is going to be the key value. And then we are going to do like this. We're going to use a switch statement. So we're going to switch the key and for every different value, we are going to do something different. So case, for example, for, so the case for, the case, for example, for W is going to be 119. So let's say case 119 and now we're going to do something here and then we're going to break. This is the break statement we always need. Uh, then we're going to make case uh, for S is going to be 115 and A and D is going to be then 97 and 100. Okay, so this is case 115. So this is for uh, W. This is for S. Uh, 97 should be A, break, 
And then K is 100, this, this should be S. No, this should be D, sorry. Then break that. Cool. Now let's make a default case, which is just a break. Okay, cool. That's our switch statement is made. Now we just need to say what happens every time, uh, every time one of these uh, keys is pressed. Actually, this is going to happen. Oh, actually, this is the old file. I should open the new one, which is called Starship. And you know what? I think this file still exists in our folder. Exactly. So player ship, I'm just going to delete it. Exactly. Good. Uh, let's actually create this function here inside our Starship class. We're going to call this move. And then this will get a key value. And we're going to actually put all this stuff inside our move function of the Starship class. Exactly. Uh, this will not work well with the starships that are just enemy ships because they are going to move automatically, not using some key pressed. So um, I still think it makes sense to put it inside the starship class though, for some reason. So what we need now is to have a position for our starship. So I'm going to just to create a variable call it uh, ship position. Uh, I'm going to make it equal to 0, 0, 0. It's going to be an array with three elements inside, x, y, and z. So this is going to be our position. And every time we press a key, this position changes. For example, if we press W, we want our ship to advance vertically. So position one is going to be equal to, uh, I don't know, 0 0.05. It's going to be equal plus to 0 0.05. All right, when we press S, we want to instead to go down. So this is going to be minus 0 0.05. And then when we want to go, when we press A, we're going to go left. So uh, this ship position 0 minus equal to 0 0.05. And when we press D, we want to go right. So this position 0, so the X value uh, is going to be plus equal 0, 0, 0.05. Uh, let's actually create a variable for that. Let's call it this, this ship speed. And let's initialize it to 0 0.05. So we add a single variable instead of these hard-coded numbers. There we go. Um, cool. So when we update this uh, object, we want actually to also update the position of the starship. So this is to update the position of our projectile. So after that, we probably want to uh, update the position of our sprite starship exactly so let's do like this this sprite starship dot set position this is the function that we created for our sprite class set position uh this is going to be equal to this position right it's going to slice it inside the function so we don't need to slice this vector here it's going to do it inside the function okay so i guess this uh, could work. Oh, actually, yeah, we need to, when we press the, in the key press function, we need to call the move uh, function from our player ship, our starship class. Good. Okay, so this should work. Let's just check it. A uh, bunch of errors. Let's see if this actually, oh, no. So we're getting an error. Pos is undefined. Uh, so at line 59 of our sprite class. So this pos here and this is undefined because it's not called position, but we actually called it ship position. Exactly. Stupid mistake. Uh, good. Let's see if this now works. Of course, I have to save the main file. Good. Uh, okay. It seems to work. So when I press the keys, I'm actually able to move the starship around with WASD, um, which is okay. But what we want to do is that if we keep the key press, the ship is continuously moving in that direction. So what I think we want to do is inside the update function to continuously actually sum the direction to our position. And in case we don't press any key, uh, the current direction is going to be 0, 0, 0. So let's do like this. Let's create a variable, uh, maybe here. Let's call it this dot uh, move direction. This is going to be an array with three, actually only two elements, I think. So here we're going to say 
this move direction uh, is going to be, in case we go up, is going to be zero. This ship speed, right? Uh, in case we go down, it's going to be zero minus this ship speed. Right, in case we go left, it's going to be equal to uh, minus this ship speed, zero for the epsilon. In case we go then right, it's going to be equal to this speed, at zero for the epsilon. Cool, so what we good, what we do that, oh, actually I forgot to change the name here. So this move direction is going to be equal to that. Direction is going to be equal to that. Okay, cool. So what we're going to do that is going inside update uh, function. Uh, let's maybe create another function and call it just update ship position function. Uh, we're going to do like this, this uh, sprite starship set position. Uh, let's do like this, uh, this dot ship position zero plus equal this uh, uh, ship direction It's called move direction zero and then this ship Position one plus equal this uh, ship uh, Now we called it move direction one good and this should be good to go good so now uh, if we go if we save our main file and we go here and we press a button nothing happens oh because we forgot to, i mean i forgot to call the update position inside our update function good so this dot update po ship position inside our update function good save the main file and okay cool <laughs> the only problem now is that uh, this uh, keeps going even if i am not pressing the keys anymore so we have to find a way to tell max uh, to tell our JavaScript that we are not pressing the key anymore. Now uh, we're going to use the key up object. This was uh, kindly suggested to me on uh, some friends on Discord, on the Max Discord. Uh, by the way, if you're not in the Max uh, Discord channel, join it because it's great. Uh, I think I will put a link in the description. It's the place to be. Um, so when we uh, release this key so basically every time we're actually going to release any type of key we want to just trigger i don't know like the number zero here which is going to just uh which is just going to trigger our default uh statement here in the switch case so in the, in our default case we're going to say that this move direction is equal to zero zero okay uh, let's see if this works. Not sure. Let's just give it a try. Oh, yeah, it seems to work. Amazing. Uh, amazing. It seems to work. So every time I press the key, the ship is moving. Every time I'm releasing it, the ship is stopping. Nice. Um, cool. We could stop here. It's already probably a long video. But you know what? Before stopping, let's just add the background that makes this thing look much nicer. Uh, cool, so we're going to go in our game assets class We're going to create a new variable and call it this sprite uh, underscore background Let's call it just BG sign it to null and uh, Okay, so when we load the assets, we're going to load an image for that. So new sprite uh, okay, so we need an image now of a background. So I already have found an image which I like which is this image here some sort of nice uh, space uh, sky cartoonish made and i'm going to just use that i'm going to put a, in the, a link in the description where you can download this image but uh, you can use whatever image you want so this is called space bg.png i'm going to copy it inside the media folder of our game project i guess i also need to add it to our uh, files so add existing files inside our game project media i'm going to just click on it and add it to our files and there it is good okay so this file is called space bg.png so oh this image is really this window is really big okay so space bg.png okay so this is now a thing we just need to enable it 
because by default this sprite is going to be disabled. And nevertheless, just go in the main file, save it, and of course it's not appearing because it's by default is disabled. So what we're going to do is that uh, I think we need another class for our background because the background is going to do all sorts of crazy things like have a continuous rolling thing and whatnot. So let's actually create a new file and save it in our code folder as JavaScript file and we're going to call it game underscore background.js. Okay, cool. Let's include this file inside our main file. So game underscore background.js. Cool. So let's create our class function background. Yeah, let's create uh, uh, this sprite bg null. Uh, let's create a function to assign. So the assign bg sprite. How did we call it inside of a Starship class? Uh, assign projector sprite. Yeah, okay. So we call it assign bg sprite function. And this is going to be our bg sprite. So this sprite bg is equal to bg sprite. Then we need to enable it. So this sprite bg dot enable sprite one. Oh, and you know what? Uh, okay, let's first try that. So inside our main file, we're going to create a new variable g background. Uh, this is a new background object. And then in the init function, we're going to assign the background sprite to that. So g background dot sign bg sprite, I think we called it, to g assets. And of course, we need to create a new function to get the uh, background sprite inside our asset class. So get projectile sprite. Um, I think there is probably a better way of doing this because probably we don't want to have a getter function for for every one of these uh, files that we're going to load. Uh, but before I think about some better solution, we are going to roll with that. So get background sprite is equal to a function, and then we're going to return uh, this dot sprite dot pg. Cool, so a pointer to that sprite. Um, so here, how did we just call it? Get background sprite. Get background sprite, and it's going to return the sprite, and this should make it appear inside our uh, world. Right, and there it is. Uh, the sprite is right there. We have our background. Uh, the problem is that it's scaled uh, to the uh, to the scale to the default scale for the sprites, which is 0.2. So we actually want to set it full screen, right? So we should make um, what we should do is inside our sprite class, we should create a function to assign the transform reset uh, fun, uh, attribute of the video plane. So let's create a new function here. This uh, dot set full screen because basically what it's gonna do is going to put this uh, video plane full screen it's a function val so what it's going to do it's going to say if val uh this dot vp dot transform reset it's going to be equal to two and uh, let's by before we do that we we set it to zero. So if this is if the value is zero, uh, is going to be zero. Otherwise, in case the value is one, is going to be two. We could also just write simply uh, val multiplied by two. So we either have zero or we have two. Actually, this is even a better way of saying it. Cool. So set full screen. So in our game background. Uh, when we assign it, we are going to do. Uh, we are going to set it also full screen. So here, set full screen one. So this should now, when we save the main file, this should actually cover the world, the background, which it doesn't do. Uh, all right, something's not working. So game asset. Uh, oh, I misspelled transform in a very bad way. Also, all right. So save there, save here, and uh, how does it look like? Oh, I think it's, it's nevertheless going to be scaled. So what we are going to do uh, is that we also need to actually scale it to first to one. So let's actually revert to my previous solution and say, okay, if 
this is equal to if value is true this is equal to true uh, this is equal to 2 and this is equal to 0 transform reset and not only that but this uh, set scale is going we're going to set the scale to 1 there's a function called set scale right yes uh, good so this should now give us the result we want and there it goes it's full screen beautiful and in the next uh, episodes, we are going to make this uh, background roll. For that, I think maybe we need to get a new image that is kind of uh, has the same uh, beginning and end because we want like uh, a seamless transition. But okay, for this video, this is it. Uh, I hope you are digging this uh, this series. If you are, please uh, put a like to this video, subscribe to the channel, check my pattern to download the patch and for a lot of more uh, fun. And above all, thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Um, have fun. Ciao.